why don't you close your eyes we're going to pray father in the name of jesus we pray that today you walk mightily in every one of our lives in jesus name help us to know what we have help us to see what we possess and as joint hands with christ lord we pray our inheritance will be real in every one of our lives in jesus name we pray, Lord, you'll be magnified in our lives, glorified in our lives, exalted in every life in Jesus' name. That, Lord, as we see and behold what you have preserved and provided for us, and then our faith reaches out to grab, to grieve, to have, to hold, Everything you have for us will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that today you move us from one level to a higher level. So that, Lord, we'll be connected with this unlimited Christ. And we'll live the unlimited life. And all limitation in our lives. And in our lives. And all the restrictions and restraints in our lives. And all the poverty, spiritual poverty, and everything we have missed and lost in the past, you make us regain and repossess even today in Jesus' name. Didn't you assure Joshua and haven't you given us the same promise? Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That... Have I given unto you? And therefore, Lord, we pray today as we look at the promises of God here and there. And then by faith, we we'll walk through the lengths and the breadth of the promised land. And then as you give us and show us what our possessions are, I pray, Lord, today the people of God will possess their possessions in Jesus' name. That there will be no poor spiritual, spiritually poor people in our midst again. And then no sick people among your people again in Jesus' name. No tormented, afflicted people in the midst of your children in Jesus' name. That all our needs spiritually, physically, materially, you'll supply today and then you'll do for us more than we can say more than we can seek according to the power that walketh in every one of us confirm the fulfillment in every one of our lives today that we will know we're being in the presence of the lord and we're connected with this unlimited christ thank you lord for the answer in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. That was a good amen. You can sit down. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, I'm going to read verse 17. And then after 17, I'll go back to verse 14 and read all through again. You'll discover the reason for that as we read. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. It says, if we're children, the children of God, the people of God, the sons of God, believers in Christ, the people who have been called and chosen and selected, the people of this chosen generation, and the people of this royal priesthood, and the people of this holy nation, and the peculiar people, those who are called, out of darkness into his marvelous light if we are these children of god he says then in verse 17 we're heirs 
that to Israel something to inherit. And we inherit not just from a rich man here on earth. We inherit not from a generous fellow, a generous man here on earth. We inherit from the Almighty God Himself. And it says, we are heirs of God. That is God as our Father. He has talked about us being children. And then he says, God is Father. And because he is Father, we are heirs of this Father God in heaven. And then he says, we are joint heirs with Christ. And then he brings in another Eve, another proviso, another condition. It says, if we suffer with him, that we might also reign with him, be glorified together with him. Of course, if you are joined heirs with Christ, and you call me to the same privilege. He is the Son of God. We are the children of God. He is looked at as our elder brother. Yes, he is our Savior. Yes, he is our Lord. Yes, he is our King. Kings do have brothers and sisters too. Masters have brothers and sisters too. And this Jesus, our Lord, our King, our Master, He is the Son of God, and we are the children of God. And He says, if we're children, then are we heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we also might be glorified together. Come back to verse 14 now and see the people it's talking about. The people who are identified, pointed out, chosen as heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In verse 14, for as many as alleged by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Again, he's telling us here, he's telling us that when we're talking about heirs of God, it's not everybody in the world, it's not every human in the world that is the heir of God. It says, number one, there are those who are the sons of God. And these are the ones who are led by the Holy Spirit. You find the Spirit there in verse 14. Capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. There is the human spirit. And if we're led by the human spirit, how different are we? from all the others in the world because everybody else is led by the human spirit i feel that that's how they are led i think that that's how they are led i'm proposing that if i do this that's how they are led my mind is telling me to do this. That's how they are led. By the human spirit. But then, there are people who are selected out. There are people who are chosen. There are people who are set apart. And these are not led by the human spirit. They are led by the Holy Spirit. And that's why it says, and for as many, as a led directed, controlled, and guided by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. There is a spirit of bondage. There is a spirit that paralyzes somebody and he puts himself 
in a cage voluntarily. And he cannot move here, he cannot move there, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage. There is a spirit of bondage that makes a person to be totally restricted. And it's a personal choice to be so restricted and so restrained and to be put inside a cage that the fellow cannot think of moving out and doing something positive with his life. And he cannot be released into joy, into happiness. It's a voluntary state of mind that a person puts himself in sorrow, in fear, in restriction. And he cannot be free like an eagle and fly to the top of the calling of God upon his life. And Paul, the apostle by the Spirit of God, is emphasizing and telling these believers that you are joined heirs with Christ. Now the voluntary and the personal cage restriction into which you put yourself, open the cage, the key is in your hand, the key is in your mind, the key is in your heart. It's your voluntary will that opens the cage and says, says, the Lord has set me free. Because it says of the Son, therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed, and ye shall know the truth. The key that opens the cage where people lock up themselves, the key is the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Then you understand you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And the spirit itself beareth witness with our, with our spirit that we are the children of God. Number one, the sons of God. Number two, the children of God. After he has confirmed that something has happened, that grace has appeared, the mercy of God, the compassion of the Lord has appeared, and we're saved. Our sins are taken away. We have become the children of God, the sons of God. Then he tells us the privilege we have as children of God. The privilege we have as the sons of God. That's why it says in verse 17, And if children, then we are heirs. What a great revelation. How many people understood that in the past? They just thought... My sins are forgiven. That's all they knew. They just thought, I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's all they knew. They just thought, now I'm a child of God. And that's where they start. But it says now, if children, then are you heirs. Heirs of God. That word heir is connected with the word inheritance. That means everything God possesses. You as children of God, you inherit the possessions of God. You inherit the riches of Christ. You inherit the resources of God. You inherit all that heaven has waiting for us to be used here on earth, you inherit, you possess, and you receive everything that the Almighty God has in His possession, in His power. It says, then are we heirs of God. And it says, we're joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs. That is, Christ 
has a right to all that the heavenly father has and which you have a right to everything the heavenly father has because christ and the christians the son of god and the sons of god that holy child jesus the babe at bethlehem and all the other children of god he as the elder one the one that goes in front of us and then we who are the sons of god that he wants to bring into glory that we inherit together we possess together we own together everything belonging to god will become the heirs of god and the joint heirs with christ then it says if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together what we're looking at today is this important subject of joint heirship joint heirs with christ i divide the message to three parts number one the identity of joint heirs when a father dies yeah, he would have written a will and in the will he has written he will mention his children one by one let this property go to so and so let this parcel of land go to such and such let this amount of money in the bank go to the older one let these houses i'm giving out for rent go to this daughter let all this heritage go to this other one to manage and so after he has died all the children will want to know is my name there can i be identified there and so when you have the will of god as he gives out his resources his riches his estate and he gives out everything that he has you want to you know is my name reaching there the identity of joint heirs number two the implication of joint heirship the implication of joint heirship when it says we're joint heirs with christ what does that mean what does that imply what can i learn from that what's the result of that in my personal life the implication of joint heirship number three the inheritance of joint heirs tell me now one by one tell me into details what do i have what do i possess what is mine what's my inheritance as a joint heir we come back to number one the identity of joint heirs we come back to this romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 reading from verse 17 and he children then heirs so i don't stop there for a moment if we're children children of god then we're heirs of god children heirs if children then heirs the identity of the joint heirs it tells us from verse 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god number one identification mark sons of god the joint heirs were christ 
to identify them, to know them, to reveal them, to spot them out. These are, number one, the sons of God. And then number two now, in verse 16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Number two, identification mark. The children of God joined heirs with Christ. And so you want to find out, as I asked earlier, is my name written there? Am I one of the joint heirs? If you are one, number one, you'll be a son of God. Number two, you'll be a child of God. The sons of God become joint heirs of the Son of God. The sons of God become joint heirs with the Son of God because we are sons. Then we become joint heirs with the only begotten Son of God. Who are these sons of God? Who are identified as the joint heirs with Christ. Galatians.